All right, welcome to a very special edition of the Mike Polk Jr. Show. You know, sometimes we like to take the show out on the road and show you uh, some of what this great city of Cleveland has to offer. Today, we are shooting on location outside my ex-girlfriend Kendra's house in Lakewood, Ohio. Here's a picture of Kendra and us when we were together. Isn't she a vision? Uh, this is the same house that she now lives in with uh, some investment guy named Dave Horton, who apparently is her new boyfriend, uh, which is kind of funny because when I asked her if I could move into this house with her, she said that uh, it wasn't such a good idea, she wasn't ready for that, and she still wanted to have her independence. But apparently what that meant was she wanted to be independent of me. I guess what I'm trying to say is she's a liar. Uh, I've called her several times to try and get to the bottom of things and find out what's wrong. Uh, she's yet to return my call, and then I believe she changed her number, which I, I don't think is a coincidence. So I thought I'd just come right here uh, and get it right from the horse's mouth. Interviewer, ask her a few questions about what's going on. Questions like, what does this Dave guy got that I don't? I know he's not better looking than I am, not based on this candid picture I took of him recently. And sure, he has a steady job, whereas I am technically unemployed, but I have my own TV show on a local Fox affiliate. It airs usually about three o'clock in the morning, following an infomercial for the amazing Sonic Blade. Take a look. Tomatoes, meats, fruits, vegetables. That is a great product. It can cut through a hammer. So I did a little digging on Kendra's new boyfriend, Dave, just to find out if he's on the up and up. And though he doesn't have much of a criminal history, he does have several speeding tickets within the last few years, which begs the question, where's the fire, Dave? Why are you always in such a hurry? Maybe because you're a drug dealer? I don't know who's to say, but probably definitely. Anyways, Kendra is not home right now, so we are just gonna wait here uh, for her to get back from wherever the hell she is, no matter how long it takes. Now, I am supposed to mention that both Fox 8 and our producer Jason are totally against this entire idea. Isn't that right, Jason? Uh, this is creepy and illegal. You're creepy and illegal. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> well, as long as we're waiting, we might as well kill some time by watching some things with me in it. What a great way to spend time. Let's start off by watching some of my critically attended stand-up at Pickwick and Frolic on East 4th, right in the heart of downtown Cleveland. Excellent dinner package is still available. What a great date idea. Take a look. As I said, I live in the downstairs level. Uh, it's all mine. It's pretty sweet. And uh, then there's a gentleman who lives in the upstairs level, and his name is uh, Ryan. And uh, he and I share a washer and dryer in the basement, and I share his laundry detergent. And <laughs> it's a great system. I highly recommend it. And in my defense, I know it sounds kind of bootleg that I'm uh, using somebody's laundry detergent at my age, but I always mean to pick some up when I go to the grocery store. And then I get there, and uh, it's expensive. So I just don't, uh, I don't get it, and I just use his again. So he started complaining about this to me recently on Facebook. Not face to face like a man. He sent me a face, thank you. He sent me a Facebook message. And here's what it said. Mike, I'm writing to ask you to please stop using my laundry detergent. You've lived here for over a year now and you've never had your own bottle of detergent in the basement. I don't work to earn money to pay for you to do your laundry, Ryan. Kind of a tone, I think we can agree. There's a nice way to say that upstairs, Ryan. My response, Ryan, got your message. Thank you for bringing this issue to my attention. But I feel as though you may be jumping to conclusions. Let me ask you this. How do you know that I don't just keep my bottle of detergent up in my apartment and bring it down to the basement when I need it? I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just pointing out a potential weak point in your argument. His response, Mike, I know they're using my detergent because the bottle keeps getting lighter even when I'm not using it. Touche, Ryan. <laughs> my response, Ryan, if I could just continue to play devil's advocate for a moment, have you considered the possibility that your detergent bottle isn't lighter each time, but that you may in fact be getting stronger? <laughs> Again, I'm not saying this is definitely the case. I just think you owe it to people to explore every possible scenario before you throw out wild and hurtful accusations. Here's his response. Mike, ha ha, real funny. I know you're supposed to be a comedian or something, but this is not a joke. I'm sorry you can't take this seriously, but what you are doing is stealing. You are stealing from me. And that might be funny to you, but it isn't to me. And I hope it doesn't get to the point where I have to involve the landlord or even the authorities. Because I don't want to have to do that. 
just stop using my detergent. <laughs> Ryan, please, for the love of Christ, please call the police and tell them that someone is slowly stealing your detergent. <laughs> I am begging you to do this. That would be amazing, not just for me, but for whatever dispatcher takes that call. I truly hope I get arrested and sent to the Mansfield Correctional Facility so that I can tell my murderer cellmate that my crime was siphoning my housemate's color safe tide ultra. Mike. Now at this point, Ryan did not message me back for a week. We saw each other from time to time, getting the mail and whatnot. Relations can be described as chilly at best. And then a week later, he sent me this. Mike, not funny. What's wrong with you? I can tell that you watered down my detergent. <laughs> what a jerk. It was pretty obvious because it was so watered down that it took almost the whole bottle to do one load of laundry. You owe me one bottle of detergent. And while you're at it, get yourself a bottle too. You really need to grow up. You're a pathetic Ryan. My final response to Ryan. Ryan. Contrary to your belief, I did not water down your detergent. I f***ed in it. That's right. You washed your clothes in my f***s. You're probably wearing some of the clothes you washed in my f***s right now. Can you smell it, Ryan? Can you smell my f***s on your clothes? Sincerely, your housemate forever, Mike Cole Jr. P.S. We are all out of dryer sheets. Stay tuned for lots more Mike Polk Jr. show coming to you live from outside my ex-girlfriend's house. Woo! All right, welcome back to the Mike Polk Jr. show, where today we are shooting live on location outside my ex-girlfriend's house in Lakewood. How about that uh, band of ours, that house band, Daddy's Little Secret? You guys sound great tonight. How you doing? It's cold out here. Yeah, this is bull When do we get paid? Quiet! I think I hear Kendra's car coming. I know what it sounds like. No, that's not her. Damn it, where is she? Can we go sit in our van for a while and warm up? You can shut up is what you can do, you stupid hippies. Tough it out! Firstly, the idea of reconciling with my ex-girlfriend Kendra is what's keeping me warm. Well, that and whiskey, of course. You're being a creep, dude. Shut up! Just... All right, well, it looks like we have a little more time before Kendra gets here. So, I figure we'll uh, show another video. This one I made for the Tony Rizzo Show. It's a sports-themed show. It's on every Sunday night at 11 o'clock, right here on Fox 8. Uh, this one's called Worst Sports Show Callers. Now, Cleveland is a very sports-conscious town. And we talk about sports a lot on the radio, even though we're not very good at them. My least favorite thing is when people call in. Not analysts, mind you, but just random people from Garfield Heights and whatnot giving you their dumb opinions. Well, these are my least favorite people who call into sports shows. Take a look. Okay, now hear me out. Do you think that the Lions would trade us Megatron for Ben Watson, Sheldon Brown, and maybe like a fourth or fifth round draft pick. No. no. I did the math, the salary matches up. That's irrelevant. Okay, okay, one more. How about Booby Gibson for Aaron Rodgers? Those are different sports. As a former athlete myself, I know what it's like to be in those high pressure situations. I played in a championship game. Right, right, and what level uh, did you play at? Seventh grade church league basketball. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Sure. See, the problem with the team is they got to reconstructure the whole conceptitude of the organization. The whole team needs to be transgendered fundamentastically. I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, Browns fans! It's Randy, the Steelers fan. Ha! <laughs> Calling yeah. in like I do every day. You guys stink! Right. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you something, Randy. You ever been on a date? No. Hey, what's up, guys? Long time listener, third time caller, born and raised in uh -huh. Cleveland, moved away for a little yeah. bit to Oregon, 
Didn't work out there. Okay. Moved back home. Huge Browns yeah. fan. Dad was a Browns good, fan. Man. Season ticket holder. Had Cavs seats for a while. Don't have them anymore. But I'll get them again sometime. All right, so... What I'm saying is we need a new offensive coordinator. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, Paul, can you uh, turn your radio down, buddy? Turn up my radio? Turn up my radio. No, no, down. We need a new offensive coordinator. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey. Hey, long time no talk. Yeah. I'm sorry, do we do we know you? Well, of course you do. It's Kevin. I met you at a car dealership in 1994. Oh, okay. okay. You're doing an appearance yeah. there? Yeah, you, you remember. Right, you said you sure. like my hat. Yeah, you remember. Hey. hey, you guys should come to my house for dinner. No, we're not coming there. No. Hey, uh, you guys still giving away Eddie money tickets? No, man, that was like three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, you guys giving away anything? No. Hmm. Hey, hey, I just want to let you know there's a bad accident on 90 westbound on 117th. Okay, yeah. well, thank you. Appreciate hey, that. Can I get a free t-shirt? No. No. Ah! Well, that was really fun for you to watch. Almost as much fun as the time that my ex-girlfriend Kendra and I went tobogganing in the metro parks. I went to Steak and Shake afterwards and had hot cocos. Of course, she probably doesn't remember that, because she only focuses on the negative all the time. Negative memories about us. That is so Kendra. Let it go, dude. I will let nothing go, Jason. Let's take a look at that picture of Kendra and I again. Happier times. Okay, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, hopefully Kendra will be here and we can interview her. She's gotta come home sometime. <laughs> All her stuff's here. <laughs> See you. And we're back. Well, if you're just joining us here at the Mike Polk Jr. Show, we are shooting on location here today outside my ex-girlfriend Kendra's house where uh, we are waiting for her to come home so we can do a quick interview with her to find out exactly where things went wrong with us. But until then, we are fortunate enough to have a special drop-in guest who just happened to be walking by. Uh, I'm sorry, I forget your name, sir. It's Dale. Dale. Dale is a um, waste disposal technician, or as they are crudely referred to, a garbage man, which I do not care for. Isn't that right, Dale? It's fine. Fantastic. Now, I actually grabbed Dale when he was on his way uh, uh, working through the neighborhood here. Now, Dale, you, uh, you are in charge of emptying the garbage all around here, uh, including my ex-girlfriend Kendra's garbage. Is that correct? I, I don't know who this is. Kendra. Uh, uh, it's my ex. She lives right here. She has sort of like chestnut hair, very elegant features, eyes you can get lost in for days. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I do the trash for the whole block. Is this going to like take long? Just one second. Well, is there anything in particular that you've noticed that Kendra and her new boyfriend have been throwing out lately something that might be a red flag, like maybe excessive amounts of liquor bottles or maybe some uh, you know, or pregnancy tests? Anything like that that we should know about that she's been throwing out? Why, are you a creep? I, am I a creep? What? Now, get out of here! You get out of here, garbage man! Calling me a creep! Fine, enjoy the garbage, perv. Did you hear- Jason, did you hear that garbage man sass me? I have never been. Show a video. I. The garbage man called me a creep! Hey, everybody! Workers, gather around. It's me, your boss. Good news and bad news. The good news is, because of all my excellent work, I have been given an enormous bonus this year. I had them print out this huge novelty check to honor the occasion. Go ahead and hold that with me. We just get a picture of this. Ah! Smiling. Now, of course, the bad news is, in order to pay for this, we've had to make several cutbacks. There will be some terminations. Uh, you're fired. Skinny. You know, that guy. Jugs. You're fired. I want all of you gone by the end of the day. Also, Dave, we had to sell your desk chair. Can I bring a chair from home? No, it won't match all the other ones. This place will look like a hippie coffee shop. All right, back to work. Oh, God. I hate working here. Yeah. I hate our boss. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, cheer up. I mean, sure, it's not perfect working here, but I got a secret that helps me get through the day. Do you want to hear about it? No. Here really. goes. My week has been long. I'm sick of this job. My boss is a major asshole. 
But I'm staying strong and I won't kill myself because I've got a reachable goal. Cause happy hours just hours away. That's what's getting me through this day. I will not crumble and I won't dismay. Cause happy hours, hours away. We're gonna get tanked on those countless draft beers from the bartender with the great rack. We'll hit on some skanks, do ten shots without fear, and then everything soon will go black. Cause happy hours, just hours away. Jaeger is calling and we must obey. We'd already be there if we had our way. But happy hours, hours away. a beer and you can't beat that deal at 23 ounces a cup and though we're not queer we'll drink half price martinis cause those things will get you f***ed up I'll loosen my tie and unbutton my shirt I'll make passes at anything wearing a skirt I'll eat anything deep fried and smoke way too much I'll play naked photo hunt on mega touch I'll watch muted sitcoms on countless TVs I'll once again prove that I rule golden tea I'll get drunk and argue about current events Jumbo sized chicken wings 35 cents. It's a really good deal. Oh, they're really so good. Deal. They're meaty. Oh, Cause happy hours, hours away. We hope they have a buffet. We'll make it through today. Cause happy hours, hours away. Song. Of course, you're all fired. But the good news is now you get to go to happy hour right now. Yeah! <laughs> what a bunch of losers. To the bank! Well, we have to take a short commercial break, but before we do, first let's take a look at a fake commercial that I made for Zoo Books, that thing from when you were a kid. And then we'll show real commercials, which I had nothing to do with. It's all very confusing. Uh-oh, here comes the draft. Y'all know what that means. It's zoo books. If you get zoo books, y'all can learn about zebras and how they like to kick cheetahs in their heads and whatnot. That's in the zoo books. You also get to learn about scary lions, except they're too scary for me, so no thank you. But there's also bears in zoo books and parrots and other pretty jungle birds. And dinosaurs, too, because just because they're extinct don't mean they're not animals. So just call this number and we'll send you a ton of zoo books, probably more than you have room for. According to this pretty mom, old people like zoo books too because it takes their mind off death. And plus, if you order right now, we'll send you this sweet tiger poster for free. What a great way to let everybody know how much you like tigers. Plus some stickers, and here's another zoo book. It's just $14.95, which is surprisingly expensive considering it's just some zoo books, but get them anyways. This monkey looks like some kind of clown monkey. Get zoo books today! But my uh, uncles are jerks about it, like about the um, whole living in Lakewood thing. They just be like, oh yeah, you still live in Lakewood? Yeah, I'll bet you are. <laughs> get it? I'm like, no, I get it, because gays live in Lakewood. Yeah, you got it. It's a pretty good joke, I told. Thank you. Thank you, I'm an uncle. That's one of my best jokes. Thank you so much. And my aunts are even worse, bless their heart. Uh, my Aunt Carol uh, said to me, she's like, oh, you still live in Lakewood? Okay. She goes, yeah. She goes, I heard there are a lot of homosexuals there. She goes, is that true? Are there are a lot of homosexuals. And then she said this to me, honestly, she goes, is it a problem? <laughs> she asked me if gays were a problem, as if gays are like a nuisance, like raccoons or something like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't care. Well, the gays were always getting under my porch, you know, because they love to dig and burrow. You know how gays are, you know? And I'll come out in the middle of the night and they're just pawing through my trash cans. You know, looking for old half-empty smeared off ice bottles and muscle magazines. And I'm like, hey, you gays, get out of my trash. And I shake my fist at them. And they're like, don't corner them, Aunt Carol. That's when they get nippy. 
If you corner them and they feel threatened, that's when the teeth come out. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us, we're taping outside my ex-girlfriend's house where we've been for the last five hours. She's not home yet, but I think she's gonna turn that corner any minute because when you're truly in love... Mike! Kendra! You've been there the whole time. I knocked and you didn't answer. Get the hell out of here. Did you park your car somewhere else so I'd think you weren't home again? We're always playing these games. We're like Sam and Diane from Cheers. I just called the police. Why, what happened? Did Dave do something to you? She called them on you. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> well, we should probably go then, because I'm not going back to jail. <laughs> I already have two strikes. Well, I want to thank my guests today on the Mike Polk Jr. Show, my ex-girlfriend Kendra and a jerk garbage man. Please join us next time. Go to MikePolkJr.com to find out when we'll be back. All right. Play us out, Daddy's Little Secret. So do you have any uh, upcoming things you want to plug or push before we go? Or? Um, I'm doing a one-man show of Taming of the Shrew. It's Shakespeare. Uh, it's at the Bama. It's going to be from March 24th until uh, April 15th, uh, every other weekend. And uh, it's going to be a great show. Um, bring the kids. And uh, I'm also going to be taking out the garbage yeah. on this block. Sure. Okay. So. Do that. <laughs>